Linux is something that's been around for a very long time. I first looked at it with the Red Hat distros over 20 years ago and have revisited it occasionally through the years. Most recently using it to set up a Raspberry Pi gaming device and for hosting of open source websites using WordPress. But recently watching an Explaining Computers video prompted me to take another look. Explaining Computers used the Mint distribution, which I hadn't looked at before, and the UI looked pretty nice, moving away from the more clunky Linux UIs I'd seen before. I had a 10-year-old unused PC lying around, and I wondered if it would run Mint, and could I set it up as a Linux retro gaming PC. I watched a couple more Explaining Computers videos about Mint 22, and decided to give it a go. It said it would run on older PCs, and while I wasn't sure if the i3 chip on the Dell was 64-bit, I thought it was worth a try. There were three versions of Mint available, Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate. Cinnamon was the most up-to-date looking, and I thought I'd try that version first. There were several locations to download the ISO from, and being in the UK, I chose a British one, from the University of Kent, which sounded fairly reputable. Having downloaded the ISO, I burnt it onto a bootable DVD using Nero. Explaining Computers burnt his ISO onto a RAM stick, and you could use that method if you prefer. I then started the old Dell up, booting from the DVD using the F12 key, and Mint started to run up. Other computers may use different keys to set the boot drive. When you run Mint, you can either just run the basics to see if it works without copying it to your hard drive, or go ahead with installation straight away onto your hard drive. As I didn't know if it would work, I ran the basics first, and then as it seemed fine, copied it onto the hard drive. You can set Linux up as dual boot with Windows, but as I didn't need the computer for Windows, I set it up with just Linux on it, which is a simpler step. Then I wanted a few games to try, so I went to HIO, and downloaded some free retro looking Linux games. I unzipped the games onto my hard drive and copied them onto a RAM stick to copy to the Linux PC. The PC didn't have Wi-Fi, so initially I used the PC standalone until a Wi-Fi stick arrived for it from Amazon. I bought one that said it ran with Linux and Mint and it worked straight away after plugging it into the Linux PC with no need to install drivers from the CD. I played with the Mint 22 UI which seemed pretty nice and had a look through the installed apps that came with it, including the LibreOffice suite. I copied the games off the RAM stick onto the Linux PC and tried to run them. Initially they didn't run, but that was because I needed to set the execute as a program flag in the file properties. All three games ran and I was able to play Pac-Man Hero 2 and Pico Defender on the Linux PC. More of Pico later. Once the Wi-Fi stick was installed, the software manager worked and I was able to install other packages off the internet. Firefox also worked, so I was able to browse the web and YouTube. I was able to download the HIO app using Firefox and install it on the machine. This gave me access to thousands of Linux games direct on the Linux PC. I tried to download a few of those, but several didn't work, possibly due to my hardware being too old, but then I tried another Pico 8 game. I had seen Pico mentioned on the Spectrum Next with the game Celeste, which came from a Pico 8 game. HIO had various listed, and you didn't seem to have to pay for many of them. Pico 8 looks like an interesting project, and one I will look into more later. I downloaded another Pico game, and this worked well, adding it to the HIO app library. So Pico games at least work. I think older Linux games should also work. So then for something a bit different, I downloaded ZSAR UX for Unix from GitHub using Firefox on the Mint PC and installed the libsdl 1.2 dev library which it needed. Now I had a ZX81 emulator and could run up 3D Monster Maze and Mazogs on the Linux machine. Lots of other machines emulated too with it to play with including the Spectrum. So for very little money and a few hours playing I had a Linux retro gaming PC set up that I could tinker with when I was in the mood. If you've got an old PC lying around, give it a try. Mine was 10 years old and just gathering dust. Hope this has been interesting and thanks for watching.